Hello and welcome to this week's What Were They Thinking? We begin with the interesting story of an animal that only has an anus when it needs to poop. In human embryogenesis, one of the very first structures to form is an anus. This occurs shortly after the blastocyst forms and allows waste material to be removed. Shortly thereafter, what is effectively a mouth is formed, and this creates a continuous point between two openings that is exposed to the outside world. Some creatures lack this throughput, and instead poop out of their mouths. In this case, we are looking at a jellyfish that is initially thought to have a butt that opened at 24-7. However, the scientist researching it, Sidney Tam, has found that that's not entirely correct. Jellyfish eat up tiny crustaceans and baby fish. They are essentially one of the filter systems for the ocean. They float there and they eat. The meal goes down an esophagus, which mushes the food, and then it enters the stomach. Bulky components are then thrown back up, as they cannot go through the jellyfish's GI tract. The rest of it enters a network of canals that distribute the mush through the body in the form of nutrition that's been broken down in the stomach. As these canals become engorged with material, they get closer and closer to the surface of the jellyfish's skin. Once they come in contact, it more or less spontaneously forms a butthole, expels the waste material, and then spontaneously closes again. Speaking of weird creatures, an evolutionary path has been identified with octopus and squid, which makes them weirder than we ever thought. They are already known for escaping their enclosures, opening jars, and being eerily intelligent. This study just adds to their strangeness. Several species of octopus and squid have been found to be editing their RNA. That is RNA and not DNA, where most mutations normally begin. The prevailing opinion is that RNA modification was abandoned in evolutionary terms by most species. Octopus and squid, otherwise known as cephalopods, are somewhat unique in their intelligence and the varied environments they live in, and it is currently hypothesized that perhaps this different avenue of evolution is both a cause and or effect of their brain development. So far we've had creatures that can poop with anuses that don't exist until they do, octopuses with bizarre genomic material, and now evidence that chimps have their own cultures. We've known for over half a century that chimps can both develop and use tools, and that this was passed on socially, not an inherent behaviour. This made it a cultural event. Since then, there has been a number of discoveries relating to their cultural habitats and societies. Most recently, the chimps have a form of religion that they will throw stones at a tree hollow in a ritual-like process. The study that spurned this week's article examined whether or not humans would have a negative effect on the variation of chimpanzees' cultural behaviour. Unfortunately, they found that in 144 chimpanzee communities, an increase in human disturbance led to a decrease in behavioural variation. The results are published in the article linked below. The problem is they're not entirely sure why this is happening. The problem gets even more complex, as there's no evidence that the monoculture for chimpanzees is necessarily a negative event. What we are losing is the unique opportunity to observe and study the development, diversification, and adaptation of culture across multiple groups, independently and as they are subject to evolutionary selection pressure. This could be pressure like China's social credit system, which is affecting both the culture and behaviour of the Chinese populace. The social credit system is supposed to reward good behaviour and effectively punish poor behaviour with an increase or decrease to your score. 
This affects what privileges you have access to. What you might consider a privilege is very different to what the Chinese consider a privilege. The Chinese social credit system considers things such as travel, renting, loans, and even internet speed to be privileges that can be removed, altered, or otherwise affected by your social credit system score. This is supported by information acquired by the Associated Press, which suggests millions of travellers have to cancel or alter their plans due to the social credit system. This system is meant to finish rolling out nationwide by 2020. This will lead to a nationwide impact. And as Orwellian as it may seem, the People's Republic of China is intent upon implementing this program nationwide. The best of intentions does not mitigate the rather draconian measures China is implementing. On the other end of the spectrum, America, land of the free and brave, has also been the host of an incident involving a six-year-old boy who, due to anti-vaxxer parents, developed tetanus. The boy spent 56 days in hospital due to the infection he had received from a scrape to his head. That scrape had caused an entirely avoidable disease, tetanus. This involved muscle spasms and breathing difficulty which is why he was sent to hospital for so long to recover. Despite this, the $800,000 price tag and extensive advice on why vaccines are safe and necessary, the parents have opted not to vaccinate the child with the other requisite vaccinations. This is due to exemption laws. It is also one reason why Oregon has the highest rate of exemptions in America at 7.5% of the population. Evidence from the teen who got himself vaccinated is that Facebook and similar social media is to blame for his mother's decision to not have him vaccinated. This testimony is rather damning when you consider other evidence that has come up recently, targeted advertising, networking, and similar, all on Facebook. Other social media has not been much better it would appear. Congress is actually listening to someone who has essentially been a victim of anti-vaxxers. That he has had to go out of his way and defy his parents' decisions to seek what is generally considered best medical practice is an indictment of the entire anti-vaxxer agenda. He is appearing before Congress in response to the outbreaks of preventable diseases such as measles over the last few years. The incidence is increasing, and the time between events is decreasing. This means it is more of a problem, more often, with more victims involved. And the most vocal argument from anti-vaxxers is that through some distorted logic or application of research, vaccines cause autism. In particular, anti-vaxxers take issue with the MMR vaccine. The MMR vaccine was the crux of Wakefield's article in 1998, the article which was retracted for a variety of malpractices. It also led to Dr. Wakefield becoming Mr. Wakefield when his medical license was revoked. MMR has repeatedly been shown to be safe. Recently, yet another study has examined the association between MMR and autism at a population level. The Danish study took just over 650,000 children between 1999 and 2010. There were just over 6,500 diagnoses of autism in that population. They found that whether or not you had the MMR vaccine or not, there was no association with the development of autism. It's rather unfortunate to see both time, effort and money being put into the continued debunking of any association between both the vaccines and autism, more so given the rise in anti-vaxxers and the palpable, obvious impact they are having on the health of many individuals, particularly in America. Not only do you have to worry about America 
and your own well-being when you choose not to vaccinate. But as another study has examined, when you travel, measles may travel with you, and you may in fact affect the local population more than yourself. During the period of mass colonization in the 18th and 19th century, there was an issue with the carrying of disease, in which indigenous populations were unprepared. This led to massive outbreaks of the disease, and those who were unable to resist it. In turn, this led to a great deal of death. We are seeing a repeat of this through the efforts of anti-vaxxers. Failure to vaccinate when you travel may in fact lead to local population suffering due to either their lack of access to vaccines, the fact that their population has yet to receive adequate coverage through vaccination programs, or simply sheer bad luck and your ignorance. Some of you may have been tempted to comment before now on this video, and this gives rise to another study that shows whether or not you have read the article before commenting is obvious. This worked by giving three groups of research participants either an article, Facebook news feed, or no information. They were then asked to fill out questions or answer them. This involved three factual questions from the article and three questions from the Facebook news feed. After this was done, they were asked to estimate how many they thought they had correct. What is unlikely to surprise you or anyone else is that those that only read the article had the most answers correct. Those who did not read anything at all got the least correct, and that they had both estimated theirs relatively correctly. What should be surprising, or at least intuitively correct, is that those who only read the brief synopses from Facebook overestimated their knowledge of the content, possibly due to a gut reaction, and thought they knew more about the topic than they actually got right. Clearly social media is becoming Pandora's box, something that should not be opened. You should not rely on it for information, lest you should find that you are indeed wrong. Archaeologists may find exactly that situation when they have opened a sealed jaguar god cave that has been undisturbed for a thousand years. The cave was originally identified in 1966, but sealed by another archaeologist. It has now been opened and what it contains is an amazing cache of Mayan artifacts. The location is called the Cave of the Jaguar God. It is located under the Mayan city of Chichen Itza, which itself is an amazing location and monument to the Mayan civilization. In a suitable monument to the American civilization, there has been a dump site on fire for seven months straight. In a town called Bella Vista in Arkansas, there has been a dump burning since August 2018, but possibly as early as July 2018. Unofficially, the site was used as a dumping ground for biological material such as leaves and tree stumps among others. At some point in August 2018, it was caught on fire, and the local fire department decided to let it burn itself out. Unfortunately, this hasn't worked as planned. The problem is, the fire has caused the local area around it to become unstable, which means they can no longer get in close enough to put it out. If they were to do so, it might cost up to $37 million. The need to invest that money is getting increasingly important, as the smoke from this fire is having a negative effect on both the air quality and the local population. This owes to that unofficial status. Local authorities believe individuals may have been dumping inorganic matter there, such as batteries and chemicals. In both instances, a fire with these involved would be very dangerous and prospectively toxic. If not toxic, at least that much more difficult to handle. If you have found this week's articles interesting, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.